In this section of the course, we're going to be looking how to apply the principles of equilibrium of particles and the equilibrium of bodies to analyse the forces in planar truss members. So let's quickly write that down. So we're going to apply the principles of equilibrium of particles and bodies to analyze the forces in planar truss members. So planar meaning that we're working in two dimensional two dimensions only. So what we really need to do now is define what we mean by a truss. So you could go into your web browser and have a look at images of trusses. Uh, but for what we're going to do, we have to have a more precise definition of what we mean by a truss. So let's draw what we imagine a simple truss member looks like. So we have something that looks like a bridge. And it's made up of bar members. So if I was to put a loading on the top of here, and maybe I was going to support this bridge as well. So we'll have a pin support down at this left hand side and a roller support on this right hand side. This is what we would call a truss structure now we're going to define it a little bit more precisely so at the ends of every one of these bars we're going to have a joint and i'll try and make that big enough so i'll put big blobs even this intersection here there will be a joint and we're going to say that each of these joints where the members are joined together are what we call smooth pinned joints. So what this means is that there is no friction between the, the joints of the members and therefore as a consequence of that all of the forces can only travel actually down the bars. We can't get any rotation in the bars and therefore we won't get any bending of the bars. Okay. We're going to assume that all of the loading on the structure, like the load that I've already applied in red, is go only going to be applied at the joints. We're going to neglect, for now, the self-weight. We could, in future problems, assume that the self-weight of the, the bars goes 50% to one joint and 50% to the other joint. But for most problems we're going to consider, we're just going to neglect the self weight of the bars themselves. Okay, and for this course, in particular because this is statics, we're only going to consider trusses that are statically determinate. And that's something we're going to define a little bit more in shortly. However, what this means for us now is we have just enough support so that we can solve the problem using statics. And we're also going to require that the truss doesn't contain any redundant members. And I'm going to explain briefly what I mean by redundant members. So in, if you go to Google Images, for instance, you will have situations where we have truss structures. Maybe like this. Again, we'll apply the same support conditions with a pin and a roller and if we have one bar down the middle this is statically determinate however as you'll see quite often in practical structures you'll see another member that crosses over something that we call cross bracing careful at this point here 
the members are overlapping but they're not joined at this point and because they're not joined we if we were to push say in the horizontal direction this member here would take forces down here and this member would take forces down here and it turns out that we can't solve this just using the equations of statics alone so we won't be considering any structures in this course that are not statically determined and we'll define statical determinacy very shortly now also as part of this we need to define by what we mean by internal forces so in parts of the course already we've had external forces that apply to the structure and obviously those forces must go through the structure and eventually get to your reaction forces on the structure which means there are forces in each of the bars so what we need to consider is one bar on its own in isolation so we'll draw that bar we've just got the bar we don't have the joint at the moment but from the joint you can imagine the force is on the joint apply an external force on a bar and in this case the external forces are pulling the bar into tension so this tension but as a result of this tension in the bar coming from the external forces that I've drawn in red the bar itself will be trying to pull back and so the bar itself in the action of trying to pull backwards on the joints will be pulling in the opposite direction to the forces applied to it at the joints so we have equal and opposite forces at the joints and so this is what we call tension a lot of the time when we get to the end of a problem we might label a bar as being in tension and the opposite situation to that then is where we have forces pushing on the other side of the bar and then as a result of this pushing either side of the bar the bar must push backwards and in this case we have label it with a C and we call it for compression <laughs>